morning and welcome to St. Anthony's. Today is Thursday, May 27th, and our Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Al and Shanza Marie Galindo. Today we read about St. Augustine of Canterbury, a bishop. Augustine, a Roman monk, and a group of about 30 other monks were sent to evangelize Britain by Pope Gregory the Great in 596. Gregory himself had wished to be a missioner to those lands. Even before reaching England, the missioners heard stories of the ferocity of the Anglo-Saxon and they turned back. But reassured, they set out a second time and upon reaching England, they were welcomed by King Ethelbert, whose wife was a Christian. Their work was difficult, but patiently they labored, heeding the advice of Pope Gregory, whose enlightened principles counseled them to make adaptations. He encouraged them to use their temples rather than destroy them, and to adapt pagan celebrations to Christian feasts, and to use local customs whenever possible. King Ethelbert himself was baptized and some measure of success was achieved. Pope Gregory wrote to Augustine expressing his joy, who is capable of describing the great joy of believers when they have heard what the grace of Almighty God and your own cooperation achieved from among the angels. They abandoned <coughs> They abandoned the errors of darkness and were bathed with the light of holy faith. With full awareness, they trampled on the idols which they had previously adored with savage fear. They are now committed to Almighty God. God chose illiterate preachers and sent them into the world in order to show the world that conversion is brought about not by men's wisdom, but rather by his own power. So in like manner, God worked through weak instruments and wrought great things among the angles. By the time of his death in the year 604, the results of the labor of St. Augustine and his monks were lasting. The feast day of these ancient missionaries reminds us that evangelization must continue as the church strives to carry the message of salvation to all people. The decree on the church's missionary activity reminds missionaries to be cognizant of the goodness of peoples, their particular customs and cultures, and to purify them rather than destroy what can be built upon. And the Council's teaching is what we all need to hear and to learn as we all share the task of the missionary. Missionary activity is nothing else and nothing less than the manifestation of God's plan, its epiphany and realization in the world and in history, that by which God, through mission, clearly brings to its conclusion the history of salvation. Through preaching and the celebration of the sacraments, of which the Holy Eucharist is the center and summit, missionary activity makes Christ present, he who is the author of salvation. Today, we pray through the intercession of St. Augustine of Canterbury that the fruits of his work will continue in the church. Please join us in our opening song, Alleluia, Love is Alive, number 163. Oh, 
Give thanks to the Lord on the harp, with a ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Sing to him a new song, pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. For upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. For by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the breath of his mouth, all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea as in a flask. In cellars he confines the deep. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world revere him. For he spoke, and it was made. He commanded, and it stood forth. By the words of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said to him, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, your, Go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus today asked Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Now, why did Jesus ask this question? Did he not know what this blind man wanted? Why did he ask him, what do you want me to do for you? Why do you think he asked? It says in the scriptures, ask and you shall receive. Okay, in scripture base, yes, ask and you shall receive. Anything else? Well, if there was a real large crowd, they may not have known what was wrong with him. Okay, yes. Anything else? Well, it's implied that, that the blind man wants to see Jesus. He says, I just want to see, but it's implied that he wants to see Jesus. He wants to see you. Okay, a, fit, a literal and a figurative scene. But also, in asking him, what do you want me to do for you? It established that what Jesus is going to do for him is by his request. That, it, you, that you know there's no accident that Jesus yeah. happened to pass by. One could all of a sudden, whoop, I can see. Well, he may not know the cause until he asks 
because he asked Jesus this pretty soon he's going to see Jesus responded by how by saying what but your faith your faith has saved has saved you your faith has saved you what in what way is a man's faith demonstrated today is a blind man's faith demonstrated what did he do that showed he has faith he wouldn't be quiet when they were telling him to stop calling for Jesus by being obnoxious no no he had courage it said have courage. courage right not only that but how did he call Jesus Son of, David. son of David, a unique title that recognizes this is the, the this is the son of David to come. The Messiah. the Messiah, he's going to be coming. Have pity on me. In saying that, son, da son of David, have pity on me. He recognized the authority of Jesus, the kingship of Jesus. Have pity on me. He recognized that Jesus can do, have power over what he doing something that he can't do himself. He's throwing, in other words, in have pity me, he's saying, have mercy on me. He's throwing himself at the foot of Jesus, at the mercy of Jesus. Have pity me means what? I, there's no negotiation here. I'm just throwing myself out there. If you want to, you can heal me. And that, in doing that, what does that show about his, does he have any pride? Any ego? None. He's throwing himself at mercy of someone. Like, it's like someone throwing your mercy at the court. You know, I admit I'm a guilty man. I am your mercy. You do what you think is the best. You do what you, you know, I'm at your mercy. There's no negotiation. There's nothing. I just throw myself out there. And Jesus said, by your faith, your faith has saved you. Go. And, she, and the man, because of that, he was healed. And I wonder, you know, in our own life, do we throw our, do we first of all have true faith in Jesus? Do we throw ourselves at mercy, at his mercy? I say that because oftentimes, how much do we believe in the mercy, the power of, of our God? When we allow our fear to overwhelm us, to overwhelm us, we allow our worries to overwhelm us. That we spend sleepless night staying awake and ponder our problem. We can't get over it. And as a result, does this reflect faith? No. No. And oftentimes, you know, life, I believe, is a, is a journey of faith. It's a deeper understanding, and the only way you can perhaps oftentimes often grow is you put yourself at risk being vulnerable. Think of your own life. If you're unwilling to, to put yourself, if you're willing to, not willing to be uncomfortable, if you're not willing to take a risk in your life, can you grow? No. In what way, Shirley? Well, you can't. If we... If you aren't striving to improve yourself, to become closer to Jesus, then, uh, that, which takes a risk, and if you aren't willing to do that, then you're gonna go further away from Jesus. We're either risking to become closer to Jesus, or without knowing it, we're going, we're sliding away a little bit. Yes. Our faith, our faith with Jesus is not something that that is a haphazard when it's convenient or when I really need you, then I'll come to you. But it's it's a continuous daily walk. And it's in what way is it a risk to have faith in Jesus? In what way is it a, a risk to have faith in anyone? Well, they could let you down, don't, couldn't they? Yeah. They could hurt you. Think of in your own life how many times you've been burned by people you by people you have faith in who betrayed you, who let you down, and it hurts to the core. But Jesus is telling, is reminding us, I am not like any other man. I'm God himself. Put your faith in me. Put your faith in the Father, and I will free you from your fear and your worry. But you know, getting back to like, to, to grow means that we take faith. I mean, today we have a new altar server. Carol, is it a scary experience the first time? 
It's a very scary experience, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's part of faith journey. Mm -hmm. so also today, we have a new camera person. Is it a scary experience to have a Jeanette to, to be a, a camera person the first time? <laughs> it is, isn't it? But think about it, if you never took a risk, you'll never be better in, at a, as, in your growth. You know, taking a risk means what? That you're, you're taking a risk, you're willing to make mistakes. And mistake is part of life, isn't it? I mean, having ch children, is it a risk, risky proposition to have ch children? Yeah. Definitely, right? You never know how the child is going to turn out. How do you know the child will love you? How do you know the child is not going to screw up and, and get you so embarrassed or just be a huge headache for you for the rest of your life? It's like a 20, 30, well, it's forever, a lifetime of headaches. You don't know, do you? You don't know. How do you know to, be, to get married? Is it a risky venture? Yeah. yeah. It is, isn't it? And, but, you know, if you don't take those risks, how do you know what, what, what love is about? How do you know what to love someone unconditionally, to have someone love you? It's a risk. Yeah. And when you think about it, life, all of life is a risk. And the ultimate risk that Jesus is telling us today is to put the faith and trust in Him. That no matter how overwhelming life gets, I am there with you every step of the way. The question is not here with Jesus, or the question is not with Jesus, but the question is with who? It's with each and every one of us. Do we believe that? Because if we truly believe that in our life, like the disciples did, guess what? They're willing to put it all on the line. They're willing to screw up. They're willing to be rejected. They're willing to be jeered at by other people. Because His love is ever true to them in their life. And it's in all that risk that Jesus makes them the person that they are. And the same thing in our life. If we're not willing to take a risk, there will never be for us a growth as a human being. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to take a risk in your life. Be willing to mess up. Because in messing up, guess what? Is it the end of the world? No. Oh, How do you know that, Shirley? <laughs> oh, because <laughs> I've messed up enough times. So. Yes, you mess up a lot of time. <laughs> and, the, and sometimes the only way you can get through it is by laughing at yourself, not yeah, taking yourself yeah. seriously. Yeah. It's not the end of the world because guess what? How many years later that you're still standing? Yeah. yeah. Yes, that okay. you're still standing and living a happy life with, with Jim, yep. your loving husband, and you know, and still going on with your life. Yeah. And and that's what life is about, isn't it? That you can keep going on despite perhaps the failure, the disappointment. That's what a full life is, represents, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The accomplishment, because to to have accomplishment. Of, of, of where, you, where, you, where you are today, well, guess what? It involves a lot of mistakes in this, <laughs> on, on the journey. So I, I just invite you, my brothers and sisters, today to take a risk on yourself, on Jesus, and one another, that in doing so, may you and I, may God bring us to where He wants us to be, to grow as a person, that in doing so, we may experience His love and His mercy. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's love and mercy, let us turn to now all our needs and all the needs of the world. For Pope Francis, for Alexander, our bishop, and all our priests, bishops, and deacons, may God's grace be upon them to help them lead and guide their people to everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For each and every one of us, may we take the risk in following Jesus, in surrendering our will to Him, that in doing so, may He take us to many great places and bring and help us to be the person he wishes us to become. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all the prayers that concern the words that lie deep within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us also pray for all our brothers and sisters who have gone before us, 
trusting and believing God's love and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving, compassionate Father, accept the prayers of your family gathered here. Help each and every one of us, O oh Lord, to turn to you, that in doing so, may we experience your love and your mercy. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The song for preparation of gifts is number 452, Send Us Your Spirit. <laughs> Broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit and call heir to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, <clears throat> Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance of your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other sign peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my martyr, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I will cast 
pasture my sheep, I myself will self will give them rest, says the Lord. Access to ritual communion. Jesus, thank you for coming into our hearts. We welcome you and unite ourselves to you. Strengthen us in your love as we await the day we are reunited at the Eucharistic table. Amen. Our communion song is One Bread, One Body, number 336.
You didn't have a heart attack, so it's okay. It's okay. We all get nervous. The first time I saw Ray Bath, I was so sweaty and scary too, so it's okay. It gets you over our time. Give it 20 years. <laughs> it's less than that. Also, one thing, I, as we transition back to normal time, whatever normal was, remember those days of normality in, in the nearby future, I would like to add another Mass on Sunday at 10.30. But for that to happen, do you know what I need from you? Service. Yes, exactly. See, this is what happens over the years. You get to read each other's mind like married couples. <laughs> so we need altar servers, we need lectors, we need musicians. All that we could come together. I can't do everything myself, nor should I do everything myself. We, we are in this together. For this to happen, I need your help. So, for this, so I, in other words, have courage, take a risk. If you never served before, don't worry. We're like the military. If you don't have experience, we'll give it to you. <laughs> so, minus the yelling and the screaming that goes through boot camp, we don't have that rough. So, we all, yes, we all make mistakes and it's okay. Also, remember the latest uh, word among us and the Catholic Sentinel. Is available for you to pick up. The June issue for Word of Us is here in front of the church and Mai's Asian market. So be sure to pick it up. And also, if you have a, well, I know you do have a testimony to give, email it to us that, uh, about your story, about how God touched you in your life. You all have something precious, very valuable, that could help someone else. So I just invite you to take a risk, like I said that it could help someone else. That's what our life is about, isn't it? It's about growth, risk, take, and helping each other. So if you could send us a story, and that'd be great. In addition to story, if you could send a picture of yourself, you know how they do it in the newspaper, a little story, a little picture, a little baby, a little bio, mm -hmm. which means, which reminds me, Shirley Squire, yeah. I need a picture of you. Okay. If you want to us to take a picture, we can do that. But anyway, we need a picture of you and maybe a little bio, just a couple sentences for your article so we know who is this woman who's telling us a story. That would be great okay. each week. So that would be wonderful. Like in your Abbey column, you know, they always have a little picture of the Abbey and they always have a little blur about who she is. Also, remember for all couples that are celebrating their wedding, wedding anniversary, I got a surprise for you. I'm working on a song this week just for you. <laughs> wow. So if I'm taking a risk being embarrassed, you don't have to be embarrassed, but you can but it tells you how important it is to for you to to rejoice that day. Because I want to rejoice with you. We can rejoice together of your upcoming wedding anniversary. The only thing I ask of you is a couple of things actually. If you could send me a picture of your wedding day, current picture, and maybe a point in memory of that day, that would be wonderful for us to celebrate together. But do this a month in advance. Don't give us a last minute one because that would give Pam a heart attack. She really likes in advance to, uh, to put all that together. Also, if you'd like to pray for confession, please email me. My email address is on our webpage. And remember, if you've been vaccinated, you're no longer to wear, required to wear a mask, a mask during mass. Unless you want to. Unless you want to, feel free. This is America, the land of free. We're a mass any, any time and anywhere you want to. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking to ruin the souls. Amen. Just for your information, Jan Grant finally got her furniture today. After it's been four weeks and counting or so, she finally got her furniture. Yes. Praise God. So praise the Lord for that. <laughs> Our closing song is Go and Make a Difference, number 499. <laughs>
Oh, oh, oh.